The cell cycle of an animal cell consists of two stages. One of these stages, the first stage, is known as interphase. And this is what we focused on in the previous lecture. We said that interphase involves the synthesis of proteins, the production of organelles, and the replication of DNA that are used in the second stage of the cell cycle of the animal uh, cell, known as the M stage. So the second stage is known as the M stage or the mitotic stage. Now the mitotic stage consists of two processes. We have mitosis as well as cytokinesis but these two processes are actually interconnected as we'll see in just a moment. So mitosis although it is one continuous process we usually divide mitosis into four individual phases we have prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase and then we have cytokinesis but actually cytokinesis as we'll see in just a moment begins in the process of telophase in the phase of mitosis known as telophase so let's go through each one of these individual phases of mitosis and let's describe what takes place in each one of these phases beginning with prophase. Now recall in the first stage of the cell cycle of our animal cell known as interphase the DNA is continually being transcribed into RNA so that we use the RNA to form the proteins that are needed by the cell and that means our DNA in interphase exists predominantly in the chromatin state. However, in mitosis, we no longer actually need to transcribe or replicate our DNA. And that means as soon as the cell enters prophase of mitosis, the DNA condenses from chromatin into chromosomes. So during the process of prophase, our DNA is being condensed into chromosomes. Now, recall that each animal cell contains a single centrosome, and the centrosome is the region of the cell that contains two identical uh, uh, centrioles. Now, what happens in prophase is these two centrioles begin to move to opposite ends as shown in the following diagram. And as they move to opposite ends, these centrioles begin to synthesize the spindle apparatus, also known as the mitotic spindle apparatus. And what the mitotic spindle apparatus consists of is special types of spindle fibers that are made from microtubules. So as our two centrioles move apart to opposite ends of the cell to opposite poles of the cell, our microtubules, the spindle fibers also known as asters, begin to grow and they radiate outward towards the center of our cell, towards our nucleus. At the same time that that happens, our nuclear membrane begins to deteriorate and the nucleolus disappears altogether. And what this basically does is it allows the spindle fibers to make its way into the nucleus region of our cell so that our spindle fibers, as we'll see in just a moment, can actually attach to a special region on the centromere. So basically each one of these chromosomes are connected by a centromere or the region where they connect is called the centromere. And what also happens in prophase is the centromeres of the chromosomes develop these attachment points known as kinetochores. So this concludes prophase. Now let's move on to the second phase known as metaphase. So in metaphase, these two centromeres have now moved to opposite ends to opposite poles of the cell and now what happens is these spindle fibers basically radiate outward and attach onto the kinetochore of the centromere of our chromosome pairs. So this is shown in the following diagram and what also happens is these spindle fibers which are now connected they move our chromosomes to the center of our cell 
cell and they uh, and they align our chromosomes on the center line also known as the equatorial line which is basically the y-axis shown on the diagram here so we have uh, our chromosomes aligned along the equatorial plate and this is metaphase. Now let's move on to anaphase. So during the process of anaphase, we undergo a process known as disjunction. And disjunction is basically the process by which we separate our sister chromatids. So recall in the process of interphase, we actually replicate every single DNA molecule in the cell. So if we're talking about a human cell, during the process of the cell cycle, we have 46 individual DNA molecules and each one of these 46 DNA molecules is replicated and we join them uh, by using our proteins in the region known as the centromere. So in this diagram, we only have four of these pairs, but for humans, we have 46 of these chromosome pairs and each one of these individual chromosomes in the pair is also known as a chromatid or a sister chromatid. So basically this is one sister chromatid and this is a, a second sister chromatid. This is one sister chromatid and this is a second one and so forth. And these sister chromatids are identical because in interphase we replicate, we use the first original to form the second replicated sister chromatid. So during this phase of anaphase, the spindle fiber pull the identical chromosome pairs apart by breaking our centromeres and this is shown in this diagram and when we break the centromeres each one of these chromatids has its own unique centromere region. Now the identical chromosomes in any pair also known as sister chromatids begin to move to opposite ends as shown in the diagram and this separation of chromosomes is known as this junction. Now let's move on to telophase. So in telophase, these spindles basically move our uh, sister chromatids to opposite ends so that once we are in telophase, each end of the cell now contains the identical set of chromosomes. So we have four on the left end and four on the right end. Now what also begins to happen is the nuclear membrane begins to reform, but it begins to reform on both sides sides so that now we begin to develop the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus and it basically encloses these two sets of identical chromosomes. So the spindle apparatus also begins to deteriorate and we basically take our chromosomes and we decondense our chromosomes back into the chromatid and this basically prepares our cell for the interphase. So once telophase and cytokinesis ends, the cell will once ago enter, well once again enter interphase, well uh, where it will need to basically transcribe the DNA into RNA to synthesize the proteins. And that's exactly why the chromosome must uncoil and decondense into chromatin to get ready for transcription in the process of interphase. And in telophase, cytokinesis actually begin. So what exactly is cytokinesis? So cytokinesis begins in telophase and then it continues after telophase ends. So basically cytokinesis is the breaking of the cytoplasm. So this is the process by which the cell membrane begins to divide, the cytoplasm begins to separate and the organelles is are and the organelles are basically distributed among two cells equally. So we have two identical daughter cells 
cells that are the same in size and which have the same exact genetic information. And notice that our chromosomes are no longer chromosomes because they decondense into the chromatin form as shown in the following diagram. So these are two identical daughter cells that have the same exact genetic information and which are smaller than this original cell because we basically divide this in half. Now, once these cells enter interphase, they can once again grow and enlarge and eventually each one of these cells will be exactly the same as our original cell in terms of size and the amount of cytoplasm found inside those cells.